And so now that we have our job opening created, kind of step two is figuring out, you know, what do we want someone to fill out to apply for this job? And then what kind of assessment do we want to have someone take to kind of score them and see if they could be a good fit for this job opening? So we'll go ahead and jump into that here. Sweet. And so from anywhere in recruit, we can go ahead up to the top right under our settings, a little rent and screwdriver. And once we open that up, we'll go down here to the left-hand side of the page to web forms, which we quickly touched on earlier. Um, so by default, when you open up web forms, you're gonna have your basic candidate application. Um, these are all just gonna be pulling from fields on the candidate page. Um, so you know, with that default application, you have that basic contact information, address, educational info, kind of all the basics that you'd expect. But let's say we wanted to create a unique one for this particular role. Um, so we can go here under the create web form button. We'll pull that up and we can give it a name up here in the top left. So we'll go ahead and create our developer application form. From here over on the left-hand side of the page, we can just drag in any of the fields that we want to um, you know, ask for or require on this application form. So maybe in this case, maybe you don't care about educational details, but you care about their proficiency with certain softwares, right? Then you can go ahead and remove and add fields as necessary. Once you're done with that, we'll go ahead to the next step here which just has a little bit of extra information. Um, so up at the top, of course, you can confirm the name. Uh, you can drop in a form URL. That basically is a way to identify if you only want this to be able to be embedded on one web page, you can lock it that way. Otherwise, you can just put an asterisk, which means there isn't going to be a page restriction on this. So your web developer could put it on multiple pages without any issue. What you can also do is actually say that when someone applies via this form, I want them to be owned by a specific person. And this is kind of where it gets into the use case of having multiple application forms, because maybe if we had a you know, form for a marketing intern, well, I don't really need to own that, right? Maybe Brett needs to own that. So we can have a different form that actually dictates who's going to be responsible for this candidate once they fill it out. So in this case, let's say I'm going to be the owner of that candidate. And then down here at the bottom, we have just a couple options that you can set up. Um, so we can go ahead and notify the candidate owner if we'd like. Uh, it does give you kind of an out of the box uh, email template that would go out, which of course you could edit. Um, we can also acknowledge the candidates. We could send them an email back, you know, a thank you for your application. We'll be reaching out soon. Um, and then down at the bottom, you can actually post this through an approval process if you wish. Um, so maybe if you wanted to have everyone go through a basic screening by like a level one hirer, and then once they get approved, they would actually move to that hiring manager to schedule an interview. You can kind of filter things out um, with some approval processes. Now, I do want to highlight, this isn't the only way to set these up. We're not going to dig too much into workflows here on this webinar, but any of these things like assigning things, notifying the owner, notifying the candidate, you could build all those out custom using workflows. Um, this is just a quick and easy way to do it on a per form basis, uh, just depending on how you'd like it to be implemented. And then last but not least, once you actually have that finalized, you can go ahead and embed this on your page. Um, so it gives you a variety of different embed codes, as well as a direct link. If you want to maybe send out an email blast to a bunch of candidates that you just pulled in with a source booster, right? You can go ahead and take that form and just have it as a standalone page if you'd like to do it that way. Um, generally, I will advise these look best if they're embedded on a page. So if at all possible, grab that and create like a landing page for it. Um, but if you want a really quick way to send it out, you can just grab a link to it where it'll live on its own page independent of your website. Alrighty, and so now that we have our kind of initial intake form created, we'll go ahead and create an assessment. And so really the difference between these two is that your, your intake or your candidate form is just that basic information, right? Name, email, professional background, basically the stuff that's gonna be on a resume. An assessment is actually a way to get a little bit more granular and start scoring the candidate. And so I'll go ahead and kind of create one here. So from within our assessments, we can go ahead and add an assessment. Now we can actually do these a couple different ways. So you could add an assessment to be filled by a candidate by a recruiter or by an interviewer. In this case, I want it to actually be filled out by the candidate. So I'll go ahead and create one that way. And so now we kind of have a blank template here for us to go ahead and make that assessment. And so we'll get started by just giving it a name. This is our developer assessment here. 
I've dropped in a quick question under our first competency for what is your most comfortable coding language. Now I do want to highlight, you could make these assessments like a quiz question with a right or a wrong answer, or you can make them kind of general or do a mix of both, right? So though there's no wrong answer to what your most comfortable coding language is, I still do care about what that answer is. And so if I go ahead and open up the settings here using the little cog, I can go ahead and change this over from a paragraph answer to a selection answer, right? So now I'm giving them a list of choices. And so, you know, if I'm hiring for a new developer, maybe I want to ask, you know, what's that most comfortable language? Is it Deluge, JavaScript, Python, or PHP? And then I can assign weights to each of those answers. Uh, now I do want to highlight they use the word weight here. It's not how you would oftentimes use the word weight. Like if you're thinking about like, I'm going to weight something by like a, a fraction or a percentage. These are really just the point value of the answer. And so within this, I kind of give these a point value of, hey, if Deluge is your most comfortable language, that's the best answer you could give. So that's going to be a 10. JavaScript is pretty similar to Deluge. So if you already are you know, a JavaScript lover, I'll give you an eight. Python's a little more different, so that gets a seven. And then PHP is, is kind of a different world of its own. So that's great. You get a couple points for being good at language, but it's not as relevant as some of these others. So I'm going to give it a lower point value. So these are really nice because if you have a really uh, significant flow of applicants, you can use these to actually score people and prioritize setting up your interviews with the people that are the best fit based on these assessments. Now, I do want to highlight it groups these into competencies. They basically function like a section. Um, so in this case, I'm keeping this one really simple just for the purpose of our uh, example here. But let's say I would have a section around development background. And maybe if I wanted to do like a quiz section, I'd add that as a different competency, kind of let them get used to it, filling out some basic information and then, you know, spring some of my trick questions on them uh, to see how they would process some uh, more challenging questions. Okay, and now from there, we have it in our list of assessments and it's now ready to be used uh, in relation to a job opening um, to actually start getting our candidates into the system.